Kobe Bryant was absolutely right about Kevin Durant. And in KD's 17th year as a pro, Kobe is still right. Uh, you said that Tony Allen was the toughest guy to defend you. Who is By the toughest far. guy to defend? Kevin Durant. Mm. Okay. Kevin Durant. That yeah. was the one that I, I retired without really having to f being able to figure out what it is that he, you know, how I can Why? stop him. Without hesitation, Kobe said KD was the toughest player for him to guard. Not LeBron James, not D Wade, not even T Mac. Kevin Durant. And is anyone shocked? How many seven footers have guard skills? Not bull bull guard skills, where they can show a little flash once in a while, but legit guard skills. KD is at least seven feet, but he tries to downplay it. Although we've seen the pictures. He's got a seven foot five wingspan, part of why he's been an underrated defender and rim protector in his career. But when you have a wingspan that's longer than Giannis's, how is it fair to be that skilled? Now your first thought on KD is always his jumper, right? Thanks to that insane wingspan, you can't get a hand in his face, he'll just shoot right over you. For his career, he's shooting 50, 39, and 89. That's right, he's seven feet tall and he's just shy of a career 50, 40, 90. He is the mid-range god. If he wanted to, he probably could have led the leagues in threes at least once. He peaked at third place in 2012. In fact, he's never even cracked 200 threes in a season. He prefers to use it as a dagger if you dare to leave him open, owning the mid-range with that hezzy pull-up. KD actually plays a lot like Tracy McGrady, another guy who gave Kobe fits. Durant actually said he modeled his game after T-Mac more than anyone else, which is probably why it was so hard for Kobe to guard him. A taller T-Mac, just unfair. But KD's shooting isn't even what makes him so dangerous. Kevin Durant's definitely in the conversation for being a top 10 ball handler in the league. And if you're talking about seven footers, he's clearly the best at handling the ball, right? Who could you even argue above him? Let us know in the comments. Kobe knows this up close and personal. He got crossed up by the Slim Reaper twice in the same game. With that combo of skills and length, KD's been one of the dominant forces of the last decade and a half. He's led the league in scoring four times and won two finals MVP on a team that featured Steph Curry. Sure, you can argue that KD benefited from Steph's presence, but watch those finals highlights and try to argue that Steph didn't benefit from KD too. In the 2017 finals, 35 points, eight rebounds, five assists on 56, 47, 93 shooting. It's easily one of the greatest finals appearances of all time. But do you know why Kobe really loved Kevin Durant? He had that Mamba mentality. Not afraid to miss the game when he shot, or not afraid of the moment. I think um, you know that's what that's what Kobe means, man. He's been in so many situations where it didn't go well for him, and he learned from it. And I think with Russell and I, we've been in so many similar situations where you know um, we made mistakes and we cost our team the game from you know turnovers and missed shots to missed defensive assignments, but it just made us better as players. You can't be afraid to lose if you're gonna be a top guy in this league. Kobe had that trait, and now, so does KD. You might argue that it's blasphemous to say KD's got the mama mentality. After all, Kobe never switched teams when he lost, right? Well, he tried to. From 2003 to 2007, after it got rocky with Shaq and before he got Powell, Kobe was constantly in rumors to move to Chicago or go play with the Clippers. It didn't work out so well for KD, and more importantly, Kobe just played in a different era. Do you think if Kobe played in this player empowerment era, he'd still be a Laker for life? Let us know in the comments. Kobe actually talked about this after KD joined Golden State, probably putting that to rest. As a leader, you gotta be able to take the good with the bad, man. You can't just, cause the ship's sinking, all of a sudden I'm gonna jump off and swim to another ship like that. You don't do that, right? You can win championships in front of everybody, and you can miss the playoffs in front of everybody. You gotta be able to take both sides of it. Or, or sign with Golden State. <laughs> but they, no, weren't, they weren't losing. That's a, no, it's a con, it's, it's, it's the opposite view. It's the yeah. opposite view. No, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to stay. It is. Yeah. If you're doing something that's so easy, man, you might want to reconsider what you're doing. Like, I, I don't, like, I can't, you know, Durant's been a friend of mine for a very, very long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, he's been a friend of mine for a long time. So has LeBron and all those guys. Would I make the same decision? No. But that's their decision. That's their choice. I would have stayed. 
On detail, Kobe had a few ideas of how KD could become even more dangerous after he won his second title in 2018. Two MVPs in the finals is great. Back-to-back -back championships is great, but there is next season and I have to get better and I can get better. So I look at playing the mid post, the post, the high post and becoming one of the most dangerous passers in the league from that position. Now here, this is the most important thing I need to add to my game. I gotta become insanely deadly in the post and in the mid post with my passing. Right, my teammates need to be moving and cutting and um, looking for open opportunities, the same way they do when Draymond has the ball. You know, I gotta become an incredible threat with my passing ability here. But a year later, Kobe gave KD even more important advice. Durant tore his Achilles in 2019, effectively ending his time with Golden State. Remember, an Achilles injury is what basically ended Kobe's career and definitely his peak, right before the 2013 playoffs. Achilles, you're not dealing with a muscle where you can you know, work it back into shape. I mean, you have to let the tendon heal and there's no, you can't rush it at all. So it's a lot of being patient and then paying attention to what the doctors are saying. You have to do the physical therapy every single day and it's boring. I mean, it's really boring. Like, <sighs> you know, oh, it is really, really boring. But you have to be able to find the small little challenges, you know, and, uh, and kind of the everyday boring stuff uh, because that, that is what will get you to where you want to go. Kobe meant a lot to the NBA world after his retirement but he seemed especially focused on Kevin Durant, probably because he recognized how special he was offensively. So it was particularly hard on KD when Kobe died. KD, what did, what did Kobe mean to you as a player and a person? It's still hard to process this. It's, uh, it's a tragedy. It's just made so many people in the world so sad. And having an opportunity to compete against Kobe and being around him in the human space was uh, it was a joy, you know, and those emotions just started coming out at once. It was, it was hard to comprehend all of this. Just having at that time and those moments with Kobe, it was always about pressing forward. At this time, it's so hard to do so with just the amount of impact that he had on all of us, you know. It's KD took his time coming back, missing a year and a half to start his Brooklyn career. Kobe died during the hiatus. But when KD was back, he was back. Remember him dropping the most points ever in a Game 7? People forget about that because he lost, but at the time, it was iconic. KD has aged gracefully, even after the injury. Sure, he misses a lot of time, though this year he's been incredibly healthy for the Suns. But that Hezzy pull-up, the crossover, the efficiency at every spot on the court, it's still there. And Kobe's not the only one to say that KD is the hardest in the league to guard. Chandler Parsons, who played against KD throughout the 2010s, said he was tougher to guard than LeBron James. Blake Griffin said that he's completely unaffected by defenders. It doesn't matter how you guard him, Kevin Durant is gonna get his. Do you think he's the greatest scorer of the 21st century? Do you think he might even be the greatest scorer of all time? Let us know in the comments and watch how SGA's Thunder team is even better than KD's. Listen to the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia, and garbage rankings for more NBA content.